First part of the hinge process is to make the hinge blank. This is a 256 thread. That's about two millimeters, a little over two millimeters, 86 thousandths diameter. This is quarter inch stock, six millimeter diameter-ish brass. With the part sitting comfortably in the 5C spin indexer, it's time to make a rectangle out of this round.
My next step in the process is to put the clearance holes and the clearance assist holes in this blank before I cut it off. Now it's going to be kind of hard to pick up the end with the edge finder and walk in, so I've made a small blank here. Let's see if we get a better light here. There we go. I made a small blank here of a known thickness. Popping that on the end of the part, I have a larger surface to hit with the edge finder and I know exactly how far to go to get to the shoulder of that thread. That will help me position my drills and cutters. Let's do it. And knowing the thickness of that little button allowed me to put that tool right on this surface right here. So right now my spindle is centered side to side right on the money and zeroed out on this large surface right there. All right, midstream change of plans here, guys. Instead of rounding off these corners, I'm going to leave them sharp, and I'm just going to go around, and I'm going to put a 45 on there big enough to allow this to go past the round corners in the pocket. The square body will cover the pocket so you won't see the difference between the round and the straight. So I'm going to cut these corners off. It's about a 23 thousandths deep, 45 degree cut on all four corners. Here's the final product coming off the spin indexer. The small holes are for the hinge pin and the large hole will ultimately be uh, milled out to a fork shape and then this will be cut off so it's going to be a little yoke. And these guys fit right here. Forty-five degree cut on the bottom worked out rather well for clearing those radius features in the corners of these pockets. That was real nice. And I will not lie to you, I did have to take a file and hit the bottom hole just a little bit to, I don't know if it closed up from the pressure of the milling or what the story was, but there was a buying point there. Not anymore. I am very pleased with that. I'm going to have to find somebody with extremely long skinny fingers to put those nuts on when I'm done with this. So I get it back over to the mill, I will do exactly the same thing I just did, and we'll pick this up when these are cut off and I'm ready to slot them. See you in a bit. Okay, the hinges are now complete on both ends of the blank, and I did that just so I could handle it easier and make it stick out further. I'm going to take it back over to the lathe now, and I'm going to part it off very superficial, and you can see how the hole will then turn into a slot. This is going to make a whole lot more sense in about two minutes. So let's get over to the lathe, port these off the length, and come back over to the mill. 
Next step in the process is to part these things off to length, and I do not want to damage the thread. I'd rather have a nice registration, so I'm going to use that little button that I used when I milled it. And pray I don't drop it. But at least my machines are relatively clean, so I can find it if I do drop it. Here we go. Alright. That button is exactly 0.2 long. 0.2 inches. And use the old razor blade drag trick. Zero out the digital right now. After you feel no more ticking, gonna move it in point two. That is now even to the shoulder, and the dimension on the shoulder is 165. So let's take this off. Actually, no, I'm going to leave it on. I'll make it a little easier to grab as it's coming off. I'm going to go 175 on the length so I can have some to mill off of. There you go. Do it. This is the fixture that I've made to mill these little hinges on. They are sitting down inside of rectangular pockets just like on the frame itself. Nuts exposed on the bottom. And the reason I did it on a plate and not on the actual base frame itself is because I can get better torque on these nuts if it's open like that. So I'll mill across the top, I'll chamfer the edges, and I will slot both of them because I know exactly where each one of these is are placed. Torqued it down with my new Weha nut driver, courtesy of Mr. Paul. Thank you very much, sir. These tools are fantastic. All right, let's put these things in the mill. Open them up. Round them off. Try it out. After a couple minutes with a file and a little bit of scotch brake wheel work, this is how the hinges look. This is how they will sit on the main frame. Let's take them off of here, put them on the frame, check it out.
Well, as much fun as it is to design your own components when doing something like this, you have to give some thought to putting it together. The thickness of the jig that I use to actually mill these hinges is exactly the same thickness as the body on the shaper. Now, in order to get the nut on inside the shaper, I wanted to make sure that when the hinge was put on, even skewed like that, not registered in the pocket, that I had some exposure of the thread underneath. This would give me the opportunity to position the nut and turn the hinge. Engaging the nut. Then I could seat the hinge and finish the nut with the probe. and put the final torque to it with this beautiful little offset wrench right here supplied to me by Mr. Paul St. Marie, very gracious supporter of this channel. And Paul, thank you very much, sir. These came in incredibly handy. So there you go. Once it's locked in, reach down inside, give it a little snug. This is what I used for the actual shaper base itself. And the nut drivers are what I used for tightening it down on the fixture. Another gift from Paul. Thank you, sir. All right. That's really on there, too. That's a 256 thread. That is incredibly small. And let me share with you the trick that I used to hold these, because I do not have forceps to get down inside there and hold the nut in place. Let me show you a quickie little dirty trick that's going to serve you well, I think. Grab yourself some scotch tape, tear about two, oh, tear two pieces off about two inches long. Yourself a six inch scale, bend a piece around the top of the scale with the sticky side out. Pull it nice and tight. Take the second piece and wrap it. There you go, right? Make your little nut. Figure out how you want to approach this. So I'm going to come in from the top. I want the nut up here in the corner. Positioning this is just a matter of finding the hole, pressing it up against the back, and screwing the hinge down just like I showed you on the plate. See if I can do that without falling all over myself here. And I tell you, it's a lot easier if there's no camera in your face. Let's see if I... I think you can see the utility behind having it spin. I'm proud of the recess. And just sit it back down in there. Go in there with a dental probe and spin it down. And I'm looking through the camera for this, so forgive me if I don't hit it right on the money. There we go. And once it's there, then we can go in with a little wrench. Grab a hold of it and give it the final snug. Door handle's no big deal. It's going to be a little scallop knob, like the clutch knob on the mini lathe. It's 
going to go through and it's going to have a little dog on the back that engages the frame and keeps the door closed. And that little bump right in there that you can see right by my finger, that's where the little dog is going to stop and keep the handle from rotating all the way. If you want to, you can get creative and kneel that part, bend it a little bit, and it'll cam and lock tight if you want it to do that. But we'll just see, uh, come up with some numbers and get over to the lathe and make this happen. Well, ultimately, this is what's going to happen to this little piece. We're going to put a cam on it so that when you close the door, it kicks out like that and locks the door. Looking at the space constraints here, there's not a whole lot of room in the back to work with, and I think the knob is a little bit thicker. Well, I know the knob is a little thicker, so I'm going to make the cam in one piece come through the door, and we'll press the handle on, press the knob on after the fact, and get everything to work that way. First part we're going to make is the cam. And because it is offset like that, I can either use an eccentric collet and turn it off center or just start with a larger diameter. So if you see me starting with a larger diameter, that's why. I'll turn the whole thing down, put it in a spin indexer, turn the cam section on it, and then we'll put it back in the lathe and part it off. Let's do it. First thing I'll do is establish two parallel sides to tangent, almost tangent to that larger boss you see in the back. And then I'll slowly rotate this piece, lock it in, and take additional cuts to round off the opposite side or the opposite end. Try to make it as round as I can. I think that'll file out. Let's get back over to the bench, take those facets off of there, then part it off. It'll be easier to hold. It'll be easier to hold as a rod to file it than it will to file it after the fact. That's what I meant. Okay. Now, since the inside is the working section and the thickness really doesn't matter, I'm going to line it up by eye. Shoot for one millimeter. This is an interrupted cut, so be very careful if you have any body parts near this piece while it's moving.
If you decide to do this, make sure however wide your cam is that it stays within the boundary of the door. And you also want it to be balanced enough so that when you lock it, the chance of it unloosening is greatly reduced. <laughs> How to do it. And even if it hangs straight down, you can still get the door open and closed. So it only locks when you want it to. Okay, let's make the little lobe knob that goes on there and press it on. This is a one-way trip when it presses on. There is a small shoulder on there, you can see it. So when it presses, it should stay shy and allow me the free range of motion that I have now. All right, let's do it. Let's do some knobs. Ooh. The knob will also be a lathe mill lathe job, so let's get to it. I'll turn the knob blank, relieve it so I know what I'm looking at and looking for, and I'll take it over to the mill, put the little scallops in for grip, and bring it back over to the lathe and part it off. Well, I almost let this one slip by. I got to round off these upper corners before I put the scallops in. Almost got it caught. Let's see what we got.
All right, guys, here's a safety tip for you. If you're ever going to prep a small part like this by putting a groove in that is a registration point for your parting tool, and then you go to file it, make sure that that groove is much wider than the file because if you stick that file down next to that part, as you turn it, if it binds, it'll launch that file back at you. So if you're going to file on the back of a part with a file, and there is a relief groove, the relief groove should be wider than the file. Keep that in mind. It's very important. The print calls for eight grooves, 15 thou deep each. It's about a third of a millimeter, fourth of a millimeter. There we go. <laughs> that is so shiny, it is really hard to see what's going on there. I will turn that light back on so I can see it to machine it, but those are the little flutes. I'm going to go a couple thousand deeper. Before I part this off, I'm going to hit this with a piece of scotch bright in forward and reverse to try to blend those a little smoother than they currently are. Okay, moment of truth, here we go. Cam in from the back. It does move. And a little knob coming in from the front.
Well, the thing of beauty is a joy forever, and I hope that's no exception in this particular case. I'm extremely pleased with how that came out. I'm sitting here, I am smiling ear to ear. I certainly hope you enjoyed this episode. This was a lot of work for such a very small detail, but the satisfaction is just, <laughs> that's a 10. I am extremely pleased. Wish I could get away from this little dent in the center. It's not a dent, that's the end of the shaft where it comes through. Maybe I'll just buff the whole thing out so you can't even see it. There you go. Done. I'll just have to go over to the print and see what's next. I really don't know which way I'm going. I'm kind of thinking I'm going to make the elevator mechanism for the base. Let's zoom out for a second. And that's it for this one, guys. That's a wrap. Thank you very much for sticking around, and uh, leave me a comment if you like what you see. Wherever you are in the world, I hope you are well and safe. This is Joe Pye at Advanced Innovations in Austin, Texas. I'm out, <laughs> and I'm smiling. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs>